Welcome to Hedgehog's Hollow and this special program celebrating Hedgehog Awareness Week. Now Hedgehog's Hollow is a YouTube channel for people passionate about our European Hedgehog. But we have presences across multiple social media platforms. So if you've not yet done so, do consider subscribing and also click the notification bell icon so that you get notified every time a new video is uploaded. If you have subscribed, maybe consider sharing it with someone else. And during this Hedgehog Week, let's raise awareness of our European hedgehogs. Now here in the UK, we have a campaign called Hedgehog Street, which is a collaboration between the British Hedgehog Preservation Society and the People's Trust for Endangered Species. And in this video, I catch up with Grace Johnson, who is the hedgehog officer at Hedgehog Street, and I find out about the amazing work that the campaign is doing. I am joined by Grace Johnson from Hedgehog Street. Grace, thank you so much for your time and for joining for joining me. Now, many people may know of Hedgehog Street, many people may not. So what is Hedgehog Street? Uh, so Hedgehog Street is a joint campaign. Uh, it was set up 10 years ago by two conservation charities, the People's Trust for Endangered Species and the British Hedgehog Preservation Society. Um, and it was set up in back in 2011 uh, in response to the quite alarming declines of hedgehogs that had been seen in the UK. So mm -hmm. really it's trying to raise awareness of the decline and all of the things that people can do to help. So you've you've briefly and very briefly touched on the work of Hedgehog Street and the campaign, but what exactly are kind of the aims and, and what is the work that the campaign does? Uh, so a lot of different types of work, there's a lot of different strands to the campaign. Um, so certainly one of the main things that we do is try to raise awareness of hedgehogs. Um, as I mentioned, the decline of hedgehogs, the things that people can do to help. Um, we do that with various different people. So obviously with the general public, letting people know how to help hedgehogs in their own back gardens. Um, but also uh, sort of engaging with people like developers. So trying to ensure that new build development sites are hedgehog friendly. Uh, we try and engage with other key stakeholders as well. So people like ecologists, land managers, farmers, uh, really trying to tackle those habitat issues on the ground. Uh, so that's one side of things. We also do a lot of media interviews, um, again, to try and raise awareness, really just get the word out there. Um, we support a lot of research projects that are going on into hedgehogs, the decline of hedgehogs, the things that we can do to help. Uh, we also link in with a lot of local groups. There's fantastic, you know, hedgehog and wildlife groups all over the UK. So we try and liaise with them, you know, just sort of provide any any advice and sort of um, link different groups together where needed as well. So really just trying to support local efforts, local, just even if it's just a street, but they've all linked their gardens together. We really want to sort of help and empower people to yeah. to sort of get involved, get involved and also spread the message themselves as well. It's a really a very broad range. And, and until you kind of almost listed out in bullet form you don't realize just the broad range of work that the campaign actually does across a number of private and and kind of public and other organizations within within the realm of of hedgehog conservation yeah definitely i was surprised when i first started the job that there are there's so many different elements to it but it's it's really good fun um and i think certainly over the last year there's been challenges in you know, obviously everybody's sort of had challenges, all industries, but a lot yeah. of the work we do would be going out and meeting people. We'd go to events and try and raise awareness. So obviously we haven't been able to do all of that. So yeah. in the last year, certainly trying to move things online, trying to have a bit more of a virtual presence, things like this, you know, just really continuing to try and get the word out there, but just thinking outside the box a little bit in terms of how we yeah. do that sort of outside of the normal, the normal pattern of what we how do. How you would normally do it, yeah. yeah. Now, you mentioned when you start the job, I am absolutely fascinated. Your job description is unique and just brilliant. You are a hedgehog officer, and I love that job, just, uh, the job title, but tell me what is the job description of a hedgehog officer? It's such a good conversation starter when you're just chatting to people and you sort of say, oh, I'm a hedgehog officer always uh, yeah, prompts a lot of questions, which is really nice, gets yeah. me talking about hedgehogs. Um, so I oversee the Hedgehog Street campaign and um, so sort of manage all of the all of the inquiries that come in, sort of forming new relationships with with groups, with developers and um, really just kind of overseeing everything that goes on. So there's um, obviously staff from the People's Trust for Endangered Species and the Hedgehog Society that are also involved. But I'm, I've got that kind of overview of everything that's going on and um, sort of planning campaigns and things for raising awareness and um, just sort of yeah keeping an eye on everything that's going on trying to move things forward in terms of the the conservation work that we do okay then and 
you've touched on again in the in the kind of bullet list there was a lot of education elements included across again a vast number of organizations what's the importance of education when it comes to to hedgehog conservation uh, so i think there's despite the amount of work we do i think there's still a lot of people that don't realize that hedgehogs are in trouble that they are you know they are declining because i think a few decades ago it was more the case that you'd see them a lot and they were quite commonplace in in people's gardens and things whereas it's not so much the case anymore so i think it's just letting people know that they are declining but also to let people know to educate people on just how easy it is to actually help them in our own gardens mm -hmm. um you know we see a lot of you know the the hedgehog rescuers in the uk they see a lot of really awful injuries from things like strimmers and lawnmowers in the yeah. summer so people just doing their normal gardening not thinking that there's hedgehogs there and obviously those injuries aren't being done intentionally you know no one's trying to hurt hedgehogs but it's 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 just that it, that education we're just kind of we're trying to raise awareness that actually hedgehogs are you know they're found everywhere and just kind of putting them a bit more in people's minds um, and also in terms of educating young people as well. I mean, there's, there seems to be a bit of a disconnect with young people between sort of normal life and, and nature just seems to be this sort of abstract, you know, con sort of idea. So it's it's trying to yeah. kind of link things all back together and just just letting people, just really just raising awareness of how they are struggling, but that actually we can help. And it's, it, it is one of those kind of... I don't know if it's a if it's a science or a discipline, but just just the fact that hedgehog conservation is really so important, but is happening literally in your backyard. You don't. It's not a case of having to go down to to a zoo or a, a specific reserve. It's happening in your backyard, and it's so fantastic to be able to participate and be able to do that. And that that's bringing bringing the public and, like you said, bringing kids on board with that that conservation is really important. And yeah, really definitely. Easy. Exactly. Yeah, this is the thing. They're not a really specialist species. You know, there's there's quite a lot of small changes that we can make quite easily, but that are going to make a big difference for hedgehogs. And a lot of the things that you do when you stop making your garden wildlife friendly, when you start putting in your log piles, your compost heaps, that's going to benefit so many other species as well. Yeah. So it's it, hedgehogs are they're such a lovable creature, and everyone's you know they're so popular that actually. I, the reason I love hedgehogs so much is because they're such a good engagement species. So people might mm -hmm. see a hedgehog in the garden and think, oh, I'll, you know, I'll put some food out. I'll, I'll make a hedgehog highway. I'll, I'll, oh, maybe I'll get a bird feeder. And actually it starts yeah. to, to link it to the rest of, of, of the natural world as well and all of the incredible wildlife that we can get just in our in our gardens. Yeah, they, they really do kind of fill a almost a central part they, they become the central hub of a, a wildlife ecosystem in the garden don't they that it's not like they're a predator even though within our gardens they may not have any natural predators in our garden setup but they do become the center of a garden ecosystem don't they yeah certainly and they're one of the the you know in a lot of urban gardens they're one of the larger animals that you're going to see in your garden you know with the exception yeah. of cats and dogs so yeah, and they're what we call an indicator species. So if you've got hedgehogs in an area, that's a really good indication that the, the overall environmental health of the area is really good. There's a lot of invertebrate uh, prey for them, things like that. So, yeah, it's a good sign if you've got them in, in the garden. Now, you've also, so we've, we've touched on the education of kind of the general public and spoken about people's backyards and, and that type of thing. But a lot of the education you've already mentioned actually works with commercial enterprises um, you mentioned specifically developers but that's not just the only type of commercial enterprise why is why is the education on the commercial side so important then it's just about getting the message out to as many different people as possible so you know it's it's fantastic you know when people put a hedgehog highway in the garden and we want as many people as possible to do that but if we're able to link in with a developer and they're pledging to put hedgehog highways on all of their new build sites, you know, that could total thousands of properties in a single year. So we just want to try and get the message out across, you know, people with their gardens, but also um, different industries as well. Kind of fencing suppliers, you know, DIY shops, things like that. Uh, we run a hedgehog ecology and land management course, um, which is really widely attended. You know, a lot of different people come to that. We get we get sort of people who run and manage green spaces, parks and things. We get people from local councils, ecologists, farmers, um, and then just volunteers, you know, people who are sort of interested in hedgehogs and want to learn a little bit more. So we're really, really just trying to raise awareness across the board, really, and targeting 
you know, commercial companies and things can mm. allow us to have an even bigger reach and, and sort of get those the things that we need, you know, these hedgehog highways, these gaps in fences across as many as many different properties and, and sort of areas as we can. And when you're talking about, you, you mentioned farmers, have you got quite a, a kind of reach into the agricultural community? We, I certainly think in my, in my mind, the kind of countryside and agriculture may, may be a little bit synonymous. And I know that in the countryside, the decline is, is quite rapid and, and we've got loss of habitat. So in working with agricultural organizations and farmers, is that kind of having a reach into that area and an impact on our, on our kind of rural hedgehog populations? Uh, it's difficult to say whether it's having an impact at the moment, but certainly one thing we try to do is, is yeah, as I say, linking with as many sort of stakeholders and land managers. Um, and of course, that does include farmers. Okay. One thing that we do like to do um, in terms of, you know, engaging with these types of stakeholders like farmers is attend events and things like that. So unfortunately, it's not something that we've managed to do a lot of in the last year because, you know, one of these things it's really good to do is to actually be there and speaking to people and hearing people's individual concerns and just trying to talk through things. So it's, yeah, it's not something, unfortunately, that we've been able to do a lot of in the last year, but it's certainly something that we're looking to to move forward with. We've got um, a booklet, we've got a sort of information guide for, for rural land managers that's that's geared, um, you know, towards farmers and just sort of outlines how to improve land in terms of biodiversity and hedgehogs, but also making sure that it's it's productive as well. Um, so we're working on a few improvements to that leaflet as well. So really trying to just to just move forward with this. You know, we're supporting lots of research into hedgehogs in rural areas. Mm -hmm. um, we know that hedgehogs have declined by 50 percent in rural areas since the millennium. And actually they're declining more rapidly than hedgehogs in urban areas, yeah. uh, which I think is a bit kind of flipped on its head. I think people think that when you think of hedgehogs and wildlife, you think, oh, they'll be out in the countryside, but actually our gardens can be such a good refuge for them that yeah. they're, they're sort of doing better in, in urban areas and suburban areas. So, yeah, moving forward with with kind of rural projects and, and sort of farmers and things is is really important and something that, yeah, as I say, we've been struggling a little bit with, but certainly looking to move yeah. forward with, yeah. yeah, as things begin to open up again. Now, one of the things that definitely people may recognize in terms of your online presence is that the hedgehog street website kind of hosts the big hedgehog map um where people can go in and they can they can map their sightings of uh, live hedgehogs dead hedgehogs and hedgehog holes what's the importance and what's the thinking behind the hedgehog map why is mapping of hedgehogs so important it sort of links back to any kind of biological recording. It's just really important to, to have an understanding of the, the distribution of a species. Um, so with hedgehogs, you know, they're, they're quite a widespread species, but the map allows us to kind of look at particular areas. It allows, you know, people looking at the map if they want to see if there's hedgehogs, you know, in, in their back garden, in their local area. Um, it's quite a good kind of way to engage with people and raise awareness, but it's it does provide biological data that's submitted to the NBN Atlas and various biological record centers. Uh, so from that, you know, if there was any development happening in an area, ecologists and um, local sort of planning authorities can, can request this biological data and just see what types of species are in a particular area. So it's got that, it's really important for that side of things. Um, but as I say, yeah, just engagement as well. It's really nice if people can go on and see if there's hedgehogs in the local area. Yeah. And it just, for example, if you were setting up a local project, you could you could have a look at the map and see sort of where there might be hot spots. You could target areas where, you you know, there might not be as many hedgehogs. Um, and just, it, you know, it, it just gives us a really good idea of the, the distribution of where they are. It's not used so much for abundance. It doesn't unfortunately tell us the numbers of hedgehogs because you need yeah. more kind of involved survey effort for that it's a little bit more tricky but certainly in terms of where they are and where they're not it you know it gives us a really good indication and the one thing always that i've i've noticed i think i've put a number of sightings over a period of time is it is it important for people to kind of recurringly put their sightings onto the map or is one dot enough so to speak uh, so bearing in mind that when you enter the sighting that you've seen, you put in the date as well. So when you've seen the hedgehog, it's certainly a right. good idea. So obviously that, you know, they run on sort of their life cycle, you know, they're hibernating in the winter, they're active in the summer. So it's really helpful if we're able to see that they're coming back to particular areas. 
So certainly you don't need to log, you know, every single night, you don't need to log multiple hedgehogs, but certainly maybe letting us know every month just to kind of let us know that, you know, there's, there's hedgehogs coming back to an area. Um, and that, yeah, it just lets us know, um, yeah, whether they're sort of still there or, or, or not there really. So and in yeah, the it doesn't need like, to be too often, but. <laughs> but in the background, like you say, you've got the, you've got the date data, so to speak, that you're, that is attached to each of those sightings. So from your perspective, you can see over a date range, the, the presence of the hedgehog in that particular area, can't you? Exactly. Yes. And you okay. can filter when you're looking at the map, you can filter it by date as well. So you could okay. say, oh, well, let's have a look at two. Th I think the map started, uh, it was 2015. So you could say, actually, how's, how's it different from then to now? And obviously, yep. we do get more and more sightings each year, just because the awareness of the map is increasing. But it is it is also a good really you know, because you, you can log, log your historical records as well. So actually I saw one two years ago, but I can put it on the map and, yeah. and things like that. So it's, yeah, it's, it, it, it is a good, uh, it's a really good resource. And the other thing that it allows you to do, which I did mention previously, was uh, log your sightings of dead hedgehogs. Why are we interested in the sighting of a dead hedgehog? How does that play a part in conservation? Just, just because it's it's still a hedgehog, it still tells us that this hedgehog's in an area, whether it is alive or dead. Um, so when you're logging your sighting, you can put it as um, alive, dead, or if it's roadkill. Um, and the roadkill data is really important for us to understand which stretches of road, which areas might be more dangerous for roadkill. Um, but in terms of the dead hedgehogs, it's really just because even if they're dead, it still shows that they're present in an area. So it still gives us that distribution data. So okay. yeah, it's, it's just good for us to good for us to be aware of. Okay. So coming back to Hedgehog Street and, and from the, the map, um, you mentioned that the campaign is celebrating its 10th birthday this year. So what types of things are you doing to celebrate 10 years of Hedgehog Street? Yeah, so we launched a campaign um, in March, which was to celebrate our 10th birthday. And as part of that, we were asking people to do 10 things this year to help us celebrate our 10th birthday. Uh, so that ranges from things like hedgehog highways, so the gaps in fences that allow hedgehogs through, um, removing any hazards from the garden, so things like let, uh, netting, litter, uh, making sure that ponds are hedgehog friendly, um, and also raising awareness. So we're encouraging people to do these 10 things, and that's really going to sort of contribute and, and really just raise awareness. Um, we've got other things planned for this year as well. Um, one of those things is that we're looking to produce a new State of Britain's Hedgehogs report. Um, so a lot of the statistics that we often say, so we say, you know, it's, we've lost 50% of rural hedgehogs and a third of urban hedgehogs since the millennium. Um, and that's from the State of Britain's Hedgehogs report from 2018. Uh, so we're looking to produce a new one just to see how things are going three years on. So we're doing that a little bit later in the year. So do keep an eye out for that. Um, we're trying to reach 100,000 hedgehog champions this year. So I think we're on about 92,000, something like that at the moment. So trying to reach 100,000 in our 10th year, just because that'd be that'd be quite a nice um, yeah. achievement. You know, that's something to celebrate. Um, hedgehog champions are, are just people who've registered on, on the website, pledged to, to do something to help hedgehogs. Um, and you get access to lots of uh, free resources, things like that, that are going to help you in your, in your journey to, to helping hedgehogs. And just focusing on the hedgehog champions, so talk us through, you, you mentioned it, someone who goes onto the website and registers and, and commits to do something, and then there's this wealth, and I have seen, uh, there's just a wealth of information there. It's it's really so much information. Where, where do you suggest someone starts in terms of going through all of that information? What's what's a good place to start to kind of draw things out of that that bank of information? So just start at home. Um, as part of the 10th birthday celebrations, we've also launched the Hedgehog Garden Challenge. Um, so that's basically an online quiz. You can answer a few quick questions about your garden. And then based on that, we'll give you some tailored tips for how to improve. Uh, so that's a really good place to start. And it really does start at home. You know, if you've got a garden, you can you can make it hedgehog and wildlife friendly. And that is really going to make a difference, um, you know, even in, in sort of more urban areas. Um, so yeah, just 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 starting at home, just looking at your own garden, thinking actually, could a hedgehog get in here? You know, do I need to put in a hedgehog highway? What else can I do? Can I, you know, make it maybe a, a hedgehog box or a bit of foraging area? So yeah, certainly starting at home and using that garden challenge to to start you off with those tips for for how to improve. The like you say, the, the campaign has been going for 10 years. What stands out for you as one or two of the highlights that have had that you've had in the past 10 years and maybe your time with the campaign? 
Yeah, so I've been running the campaign for uh, coming up to two years now. So, um, but I do know of obviously things that have gone before. So, um, there was, uh, I think in 2014, there was a hedgehog garden at the Hampton Court Flower Show, and it won, I think, the the a gold medal, the People's Choice Award. Um, so that was a really big achievement, and that raised a lot of awareness. You know, got a lot of people. You know, it was a really nice um, news story. Um, we've got over 100,000 sightings on the big hedgehog map, which is fantastic. You know, that's people obviously going back, you know, logging their hedgehogs, um, which is really, really good. Uh, we've launched a Hedgehog Street app as well to make logging hedgehogs that bit easier. You know, you've got it in an yeah. app on your phone. We can send notifications to people. About 20,000 people have downloaded the app, which we're so pleased with. Um, yeah, so we've in that time as well, we've engaged with numerous uh, developers as well, sort of local and national developers trying to, to make you know new build sites hedgehog friendly so yeah there's there's a lot a lot within that time that's um yeah that's happened that we're so pleased with on on the point about the developers there are actually a couple of national developers that have given some kind of commitment to hedgehog holes in new developments aren't there yes uh yes so one would be bovis homes which is part mm -hmm. of the vistry group um a couple of years back uh they partnered up with the hedgehog society and they've pledged to put in um hedgehog highways in in all their new build developments which is fantastic uh, more recently we've partnered up with taylor wimpy and again they're, mm -hmm. they're sort of putting strategies in place um to create uh, access and sort of you know foraging and nesting opportunities for hedgehogs um, and that's part of their wider environment strategy so they've got a few different things going on um yeah. so yeah some of the really big house builders in the uk are are realizing that this is you know such an important issue and, and sort of pledging to help which is yeah it's really good news and they also did i did i i hope i didn't imagine this but i think bovis for people moving into those new builds there's actually a a leaflet that those new homeowners receive talking about hedgehogs why they've got a hole in the fence and kind of just hedgehog conservation generally yeah exactly so a lot of the a lot of the developers do that you know if there's these holes in fences there's they sort of need to explain a little bit why they're there and just sort of say you know that these are for hedgehogs and this is why they're so important so uh, yeah, and uh, Bovis did a lot of work internally within the company as well, raising awareness among staff. I think they ran a competition for the the children of staff. It was they sort of made this lovely calendar with the children's artwork. So really, kind of taking it to the next level and doing as yeah. much as they could to to raise awareness as well as as sort of making those changes on the development side. So that was really really positive. The campaign has done so much in in the last 10 years. What does the future of the campaign look like, perhaps over the next year or two or even 10 years? What what does the future hold for Hedgehog Street? Yeah, so lots of lots of exciting plans. Obviously, as I said, we've got the State of Britain's Hedgehogs 2021 coming out uh, later this year, if all goes to plan. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see, um, yeah, if it's if we're sort of on the same pattern if it's you know that rural areas are sort of struggling a little bit more than urban areas and um, it'll be really just good to see what's going on and um, really continuing the work that we're doing to to raise awareness to get as many people involved as possible um yeah lots of different things lots of different plans um continuing to support research as well sort of identifying whether there's key areas that we need to sort of you know put put a little bit more sort of research support into um, yeah, really trying to just continue the the work that we've been doing over the over the last ten years. We're hoping it's it's difficult to sort of plan in the short term because we obviously it's difficult to know in terms of events and actually going out yeah. and surveying hedgehogs. It's so difficult to know what you know what's how things are going to go. But yeah, certainly we're yeah we're sort of continuing the the work that we're doing, and then we'll have to sort of see how things go for planning see a little how, further ahead. Yeah, see how it yeah, it's, been, it's been tricky. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, I will put uh, in the, the video description for this video, I will put all the links for Hedgehog Street, the big, big hedgehog map. And just once you get into the Hedgehog Street website, there is a myriad of information, details around the campaigns and, and how you can get involved and hopefully be one of the 100,000 that we're aiming for hedgehog champions that are registered on that site. That would be fantastic if we could hit that 100,000 mark during the course of the year, during your 10 year anniversary. Uh, Grace, thank you so much for your time. My favorite job title of all time, Hedgehog <laughs> Officer at Hedgehog Street. Grace Johnson, thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for having me.
It's been an exceptionally difficult year for our hedgehog conservation uh, organizations and rescues and hospitals. And so at this time, there's a lot that we ourselves can do in terms of hedgehog conservation within our own backyards, our allotments or our gardens. So do consider signing up to Hedgehog Street to be one of those 100,000 hedgehog champions. Let's get that number to 100,000 during this year, the 10th year anniversary. I'd like to again express my sincere gratitude to Grace for spending her time here on Hedgehog's Hollow and informing us all about the work that the campaign is doing. Until next time, from myself, Mike, you take care. Bye bye.